Yeah, she's going to pass out a piece of paper to, to those that are um, members of the church, those that have been um, part of the core group here. And this is the membership. If you remember last year at our annual business meeting, we um, discussed um, part, of the, uh, part of the new, the bylaws is actually having um, people that will actually hold membership with the church so we'll know who is actually members. And so um, the eligibility of the members is here. Our church secretary and our financial team have given me a list of those that are eligible. And so um, in the next two weeks before our business meeting, um, if you could meet with me, if you feel like you're on there, please come and meet with me. If you feel like um, you will need to talk to me, um, come and talk to me, but let's, let's get these um, signed before our, um, our business meeting on the 27th so that we can all um, have the opportunity to partake in that business meeting. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? We're so thankful. Amen. It has been another great year, and we're looking forward, amen, to that. We're going to take our text tonight from um, the book of John. I love the book of John. Um, John was the beloved one of Christ. Um, probably, if I guess the disciples could have, you know, if, if one could have been closer to the, to the Lord than others, it would have been John. And John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3, we're going to do quite a bit of reading tonight. So you may be, you may, you can remain seated as we read these three verses. We're going to go on and, and, and read quite a bit from John tonight. In John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3, we find, it says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, so just before the Passover came, six days before that, he came to Bethany, and that is where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. So that's where Lazarus was. And there they made him a supper. They made Jesus a supper. And Martha served. But Lazarus is one of them that sat at the table with them. And so here's a man that was dead. The Lord raised him um, back from the dead. And so he's at the table. And the Bible says that, Martha served, um, she was serving, and we find in the scripture that, that Martha was a servant. She served the God, she served God. She was busy doing the things of God. But the Bible says in verse 3 that Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. A very distinctive aroma of worship. Amen. Last night, uh, we prayed for Clinton, um, and we had uh, uh, anointing oil. And, uh, you know, one of the things that Clinton said, it has a very distinctive aroma. It's very, it has a, it's a nice smell. It's a very, very nice smell. And um, they started talking last night about how, oh, you can rub it on your face and it makes your face better and everything. And I was just smiling um, because um, we was going to talk about um, a very distinctive aroma tonight. I mean, let us pray um, before we get into this Bible study too far. Let's pray. And I ask that every person that is here, ask the Lord to open your heart tonight. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Jesus for your word, and Lord, we're thankful, Lord Jesus, for the truth that we can find in the word. I pray, Lord, that you would search every one of us that are here tonight and those that are online. You would search our hearts tonight, that we would search our hearts, God. And, Lord God, that our worship would be pure, our worship would be right before you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so, um, worship has a very distinctive aroma. Um, there's something that um, comes off of you when you're around someone if you really like them, you know? If you just don't, if you kind of like don't really like them, it come, that's pretty obvious. Um, but if you really like someone, you know, you're patting them on the back or, you know, um, it, it's, it's obvious when you really like someone, isn't it? 
And so worship in the Lord if we really are thankful for all that he has done. If we're really thankful uh, because he has given us eternal life. We're thankful that, that God made a way where there was no way. That he rescued us. That he redeemed us. And we get up in the morning and we're thankful for that. We're not then that when we come before the Lord, it is, it's actually distinctive aroma. And, uh, you know, different times I listen to different people pray, and sometimes people get, they get in their prayers um, coming before the Lord, they can't forgive themselves. And sometimes they go back to the day that when the Lord saves them. And, you know, some, you can, we can get in the habit of just, you know, going before the Lord you know, and, and crying our eyes out before the Lord. Oh, God, I'm so, so, so glad that you, you saved me and, and start repenting of our sins all over again that God's already forgiven us for, right? And so really coming into the presence of God and just being thankful, um, you know, uh, being thankful for all that he has done. And I was actually talking to Chris that this morning. We was talking about um, prayer and how, you know, uh, when I come to the Lord in prayer, most of the time when I come in the morning, I bring a cup of coffee with me and I sit down and the, I, I'm, I'm with the Lord. I'm talking to the Lord. And, uh, you know, there was a, a number of years ago, I, I always would get up in the morning. It was actually when we was living in Bathurst and I would go to the kitchen and make a cup of coffee and then uh, go downstairs and pray and uh, one morning as I was making, go, went to make the coffee, I felt the Lord speak in my spirit and, and say, you, you, you might get up early in the morning to pray, but you put coffee before you put before me. And I stood there at the coffee machine for a few minutes. It's like, ah, I really want it, right? I really need it. You guys know what I'm talking about. And then I said, Lord, no, Lord, I will not put nothing before you. And I, I went to the basement and I prayed. And the next morning I got up at early again and went to pray. And as I was going through the kitchen on my way to the basement to pray, I felt the Lord speak to me and say, um, it's okay to bring coffee. It was a test. And so um, we do go through tests, right? We do go through tests in our life. Um, and the Lord really wants to know that we really love him. We really love him. And so Jesus knows when our worship comes from our heart, when it's true repentance. And so um, now when I get a call uh, two weeks before the election, if I get a call from one of our MLAs or, you know, they do, they, they will call. A few months before the election, I will start getting phone calls. Um, they will even stop into the church and visit me. Some of them, there's a couple that have my um, email, and, and, and there's even two different um, politicians that have my um, cell phone number. And so I will probably get a call, right? I'll get a call. Um, if I get a call a couple of, uh, you know, weeks before the election, well, um, and they start telling me how much they appreciate me and all of that. I smell a skunk. I smell an aroma, but it's not, it's not true, right? And so, you know, if you and I can tell, can you imagine God sees, sees our hearts? He sees our hearts. And so, distinctive aroma um, well, if we're talking about smells bring memories, and uh, as I was thinking of memories from my childhood, fresh cut hay. There's nothing like fresh cut hay in the, in, you know, in the fall of the year. Um, there's that smell. The smell, um, Tim and I grew up of um, the sawmill in Dotetown, um, especially I could tell when they was cutting pine. Pine has a different smell than spruce and fir. And so when they was cutting that pine, it has a different smell. Um, the smell of Old Spice. When I smell Old Spice, I think of Rhonda's father. 
Um, he wore it, and uh, uh, you know, and if he was going out somewhere, um, he put it on liberty. I watched him one time, um, and he put it in his hands, and he clapped his hands together, and he put it all over his face everywhere. It was like you could smell him coming, right? And so when I smell Old Spice, I think of Rhonda's dad. Um, we could think of different things. I, I noticed Greg and Monique have been having fires. Um, they've been sending me an invitation every, every Sunday to go there for fires. When it gets a little warmer, I might come. Um, but, you know, the smell of that wood fire, that campfire, it has a distinctive smell, doesn't it? The smell of uh, uh, magic markers, you know, has a very distinctive smells, uh, homemade bread. And, and these smells, sometimes they will, um, it, they will bring you back to memories of maybe your, your childhood or a different time. And uh, uh, fresh bread, homemade bread, I think, of my grandmother's place. Uh, my grandmother, she used to make bread, I think, every day. It was, it was the way that they did it. And so um, the smell of coffee, right? Um, there's certain smells of coffee. Some people, if you go in their house, they have a different type of coffee, and it smells different. Um, but the smell of coffee. So um, there's humans can detect over 10,000 different smells. The aroma that you smell, um, they say that it affects your mood, your emotions, your memory. And that is why if you have um, actually most uh, perfume or cologne, it has sensual names attached to it, you know? Um, and when you're buying that mask, it has a name or something, and it's actually to try to uh, make you you think of something, think of, uh, you know, and so it's, it, it's, it's a nice smell. It's a beautiful smell that you, that you want to, they're trying to get you to experience that you will have a good memory. Um, and so a sensory experience that triggers a rush of memories, um, it, it, even sometimes past way long, a long time ago, it might be the smell of leather or something like that will bring you back to your, a dusty attic or, um, you know, you can, you can sometimes pick up a piece of clothing. I, I know like my dad, um, when I was when I was home the last time, and I went into the bedroom after my dad had been dead for a year, and I picked up a coat, and I could smell my, my a very distinctive smell, um, and so um, it, that brings emotions, and it, it 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 affects our memory. When we are truly um, thankful, it involves our worship to God. When we're truly thankful. And it moves God. It moves God the same as um, that we can be moved in our spirit. Um, when we smell something, it brings our memories. And so aroma of worship. Um, watch this in, in um, Revelations 8, verses 1 to 5. John explains the imagery that he observed when he was caught up into heaven or he seen a dream, he said, whatever it was when he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And whenever, whenever he, John explains the imagery that he observed, he said in verse 1, and, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood before the altar, having a golden censer, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense um, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. All of the prayer, prayers of all of the saints um, was, was offered to God. And we're at that time when those seals are opening we're at that time when um, there's going to be some things that are going to change. We're getting ready to be with the Lord. In verse 4, he said, uh, 
and the smoke of the incense which came before, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Something triggered the senses of God when that came up. All of the, your prayers, all of my prayers, all of the prayers of all of the saints come up before the Lord. And the angel took the censer in verse 5 and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. And so the prayers that were accepted up in heaven produced changes upon the earth. The same angel that in his censer offered up the prayers of the saints in the same censure took the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth and caused strains, commotions, voices, thunderings, and lightnings and earthquakes. These were the answers God gave to the prayers of the saints, the tokens of his anger against the world, against the sin in the world, and, and that he would do great things to avenge himself and avenge God's people. When we begin to pray and when our worship comes before the throne of the Lord and he smells that, there's something going to happen. And if we want a powerful church, then the incense of worship, it must be pure before God. It must be right before God. All right, we're not, none of us are perfect, all right? It doesn't mean that you have to walk in here to, you know, goody two-shoes. You've been just living 100%. But when we pray, it better be right before God. It better not be strange fire. Amen. It's in humility I'm worshiping God. Oh, God. And it's okay to say, God, I failed again this week. But I'm going to worship you right. I remember a, a few years ago, I was at a conference, and I, I was there, and I, I knew of an individual that was not living right before God, not living right before God, and uh, as the singing, you know, starts to go, and some of our tunes, they got a pretty good beat to it, right? And as the singing started to get going, I watched this young girl step out of her seat and begin to dance. And as she was dancing, she was looking around to see if anybody else was watching her. She wasn't dancing under God. She was dancing to see if anybody else was watching her. And I was like, oh, God. That's not what we do. We don't. And so, yeah, we need to dance before the Lord. We need to, we need to do that. Amen. But it, it, it should not, our, our dance before the Lord, our worship before the Lord, it must be pure. It must be pure. Don't just come in and begin to dance without having a pure heart. Amen. It better be right to the Lord. In Leviticus, the ninth chapter, verse 22 through 24, Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them. And came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. The Bible says in verse 33, Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation. They came out and they blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all of the people. And, and verse 24, and there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw it, they shouted and they fell on their face. And humility, they fell on their face um, in fear before the Lord. And so, if the aroma of our repentance is acceptable, acceptable to God, something will happen. And that is why when you come before the Lord and you surrender all, you yield all to God, right? You yield all to God. And sometimes you're in a place all by yourself and you, you might fall on your face before God or however you humble yourself before God. 
And you call out to the Lord. You might not be living right for God. You might, you're, you might not be in the right place with God. But when you humble yourself and you tell God you're sorry and you begin to, to worship him because of who he is and because he's, he has given himself so that we could have eternity, so that we could be redeemed. And then suddenly something happens. Our lips begin to quiver. We begin to speak in an unknown tongue. What happened? Oh, I just yielded everything to God. And so the fire falls, right? The fire falls. The Holy Ghost fire falls. And we can't have an apostolic church without the fire falling. We can't have an apostolic church with people dancing, but they haven't surrendered. Right? It's not apostolic. There's no, there's going to be no... And we call it the Shekinah glory. And Chanel keeps asking me, Pastor, what is the Shekinah glory? It is the glory of God. And if you've been in the house when the Shekinah falls, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. It's the glory of God falls upon that place. I, I've been in church before, um, and I, I've seen like actually like almost like a fog as the glory of God fell. And, and everyone there just worshiping God. Uh, and I've, I have witnessed and I've seen, I've seen lives change. Tim, I was in the Dote Town, one of the revivals in Dote Town, in Willie Buster's old church. Um, when when uh, a man from our community, he went, and he, he knelt at the altar and gave himself to the Lord. He, he was a bootlegger. He was a thief. He was known. His, his home was actually a place where people brought things. You know, he was, like the, uh, he was like the worst of the worst. People would bring things there, and, and he would resell it for them. They would drop stolen goods off there. And maybe Tim is too young to even remember that was Donald Stort. The Donald Stort that we knew growing up is the Donald Stort, amen, that came to every prayer meeting. The Donald Stort that went to every, every service, he had his hands lifted with the tears coming down. That's the Donald Stort that, um, that the Lord totally transformed his life. I watched that I was in that meeting. And God, is, God wants to do a great work. He wants to do a great work. And you and I, you and I, we, when we come before the presence of Almighty God, he knows, God knows if our worship is right or if it's just, you know, if it's just we're just dancing to the tunes or, you know, whatever we're doing. I want to be right before God. I want my worship to be right. I want my um, aroma of worship to be distinctive before the throne of God. I like it when I come in to pray and I feel like God is saying, I was here waiting for you. Sometimes the smell, is, the, the smell that we smell is distinctive aroma, but sometimes it's not very pleasing, like a skunk, right? Um, bad breath. Um, there's nothing worse than people that are like breathing in your face after they have just had garlic. There's nothing worse than that. Um, on the farm, when the, a wet dog comes in the house, oh, they stink. Um, Sewage. Um, it's, there's some really bad smells, right? Um, something like, uh, <laughs> I, I had an experience one time where I had a guy tell me on Friday what a great friend I was and how amazing it was. And the next day I was, happened to be traveling and, uh, I heard, I heard him talking on the CB radio. It's back when we had CB radios in the truck. And I could hear him. And so I tuned in a little more. And he was talking to another driver. And the things that he was saying was not what he told me the day before. Right? 
And uh, he was lying and what he was saying, and it was absolutely stunk. Um, I had helped this man so much. I had given my time and my money to help him. And what he was saying was wrong. Now, um, I had a few things that I was planning to give him. I was trying to help him in the industry. I had a few things that I was planning to give him. I was actually planning to give him a spare tire for his trailer, for the a tractor trailer. Um, we were supposed to travel together the next week. We were supposed to leave after church on Sunday night. We were supposed to leave together. I heard some things that was not very pleasing, so I did not answer his phone call. I did not give him the gifts, and I left before he did because I'm sorry, but what I heard was not very pleasing to me, right? And I wonder sometimes, you know, I really wonder sometimes if God were to, to you know, we, we, we should actually pray, God, search my heart. Church my heart. And you know, and, and we should know if we're right before God. You should know that. I don't think that really we need to, you know, we don't need to judge amongst us, right? I think that all of us, we should know if we're right before God. But if we got something that is not right, let's get it right. Let's deal with it. God wants to do something great. In Leviticus, the 10th chapter, in verses 1 and 2, we find the sons of Aaron... Um, they took a censer, they put fire in it, they put incense in it, and they offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And so, it's, it's not good. It's not good to, if you, it's, it's not good to pretend that you're worshiping God when you're really not. It's just have a sad countenance because you're not right with God, right? But when someone steps out with pure worship, the aroma is pleasing. Something changes. The presence of God shows up. And so your worship cannot be cloned, right? Your worship cannot be cloned. It's pure worship. Your worship is different than my worship. It's pure before the Lord. And when we offer up pure worship before the Lord, then Jesus will come down. We offer up pure worship, then he will come down. Again and again, when we offer the pure aroma of worship, the Shekinah, the glory of God, shows up. In Psalms 51 and verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a, renew a right spirit within me. So every arena, every area of life intersects with what's going on in the heart. When your heart is right, we will have joy. Our worship will be a sweet aroma when we're right with God. The Psalmist David in Psalms 51 and 12 Restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. You see, David had did some things um, and he had to make it right with God before the joy of worship returned, right? Before the joy of worship returned. And sometimes even in doing ministry, sometimes that I, you know, I can get, I'm like Martha and just be get consumed and working and working and working. And, and I, but then I have to get alone somewhere and call out to God, oh God. We need to do that. We need to get right with God. It's not just how much we work in the kingdom of God. We've got to have a relationship with God. Our worship has to be pure. The Bible says in Psalms 51 and verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, wilt, thou wilt not despise. Another version puts it like this. The sacrifice that God wants is a humble spirit. God 
You will not turn away someone who comes with a humble heart and is willing to obey, right? We need to be willing to obey God, willing to obey God. We need to be willing to yield to God. And oftentimes in our life, we, you know, we get to wanting to do things our way. Sometimes we want, sometimes we think, well, I want this. And, and, and we, we deviate away from the, what God wants. And that's why we have like, you know, we have weekends and we call it, you know, uh, realignment and renewing and, you know, we have revivals. What are we doing? We're actually just realigning ourselves, right? I brought Rhonda's car to the garage to get it serviced today, and they have sensors and stuff. When you drive in, when you drive in to Ford, they have sensors there, and they can tell if your vehicle is out of alignment. And so I drove in, and they're like, went to the desk, and they're like, your vehicle's out of alignment. How could that be? I, I, you, you must have hit a pothole or something, right? We had to get realigned, right? And I've gone in there, you know, my truck is 2017, and I've been in there so many times, and it's always been good, right? It's her driving. But sometimes we need to get realigned, right? Sometimes we, we can maybe not even notice it, but all of a sudden what happens is, well, we're just, we're just not quite right, right? And, and there's, there's actually a difference. You can tell a difference. It's like um, if a car is pulling to the right or it's pulling to the left, that's what happens. So it's not going up the straight and narrow like it's supposed to, right? Because we've allowed things. In John, the 11th chapter, verses 1 to 3, we we read a little bit about Lazarus. You know that Mary means, the word Mary, it means rebellion or bitterness. That's what the word, that's what Mary means. In, in 11, John 11, verses 1 to 3, there was a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town, the town of Mary and her sister, Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And so Jesus makes his way to Bethany where he found that Lazarus was laying in the grave for four days. And then we'll skip down to verses 20 to 25. And so we notice that Martha was the one that served. It was called Martha's house. Martha and Mary both lived there, but it's called Martha's house, right? Martha served the master while Mary worshiped. In verse 20, Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto the Lord, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But now that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said, I know that he'll rise in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Now let's jump down to Mary in verse 32 to 34. When Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, right? She humbled herself before him. And said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother had not died. Sister said exactly the same thing. But one of them humbled herself and she worshiped him. When Jesus saw her weeping, right, and the Jews also weeping, he groaned in the spirit and said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. When we fall at the feet of Jesus, the fire falls. 
The resurrection power is activated when we fall at the feet of Jesus. In, in uh, jumping down to verse 39 through and 40, Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. And she said, remember, this is the Martha. She said, by this time he stinketh. For he had been dead for four days. And Jesus said, said I not unto thee that if you would but believe, you would see the glory of God. Can we see the Lord? Do we have situations we need to see the glory of God? Sometimes our aroma is negative. We can be like Martha even, doing the work of God, but our aroma is negative. Right? I want to be a Mary. I want to be a... Now... I don't want to identify as a Mary, so. <laughs> I want to worship like Mary does, did. Mary believed in the resurrection power. Or Martha believed. We could say Martha believed in the resurrection power. Martha said, oh, Lord, he's in the resurrection, right? He'll, he'll rise again. She believed it. But Mary activated it with her worship. Mary activated it with true, distinctive worship. And then God is calling us. Oh God, search us, oh God. Search us, oh God. Praise and worship emanates from the heart. It starts, it, it springs forth from the heart. I want to just show you quickly before we close here tonight of three different places. We, the Bible talks about Abraham. Remember the story of Abraham. Abraham went to the mountain to offer Isaac in worship the worst day probably of his life, that God was calling him, will you surrender the blessing? He, this is the blessing. This is, this is the promise. Isaac was the promise. And so Abraham went to the mountain to worship. He said to worship. I wonder what would happen if God spoke to us and, and asked us, you know, uh, to do something very, very hard that we really didn't want to do, right? Would we call that worship? Abraham called it worship. Daniel, Daniel's praying while the lions are, you know, the lions are there looking at him. The lions is waiting, you know, they're, they're waiting for him. What are you doing? Praying? Oh, the lions are there. God's going to shut their mouths. Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They threw them in prison. They put them in the inner part of the prison, locked them up and chained and all of that, you know. And man, some of us, we would be like, Eeyore, be under the bridge saying, oh my, it's not very good today, is it, Brother Jim? And all they got us now, we'll probably never see the church again. Not Paul and Silas. What'd they do? They began to worship the Lord. And what happened? The Lord showed up. David was worshiping the Lord. They brought up the ark of God. 
He's bringing up the, the ark of God where the promises of God, all the, you know, the, the glory of God. He was bringing up the ark of God and every six paces, he has to stop and worship the Lord and praise the Lord. David knew what, it, he knew God's mercy. David began to worship the Lord every six steps. But we remember his wife didn't like that worship. She said it embarrassed her. She watched, but she didn't worship. She watched and she criticized, but she didn't worship. And the Bible says, therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children until her death. Right? And so um, there's, there's danger. There's danger in watching people worship or even, um, you know, watching but not entering in. Our, our miracle is in our worship. Resurrection power is in our worship. Our worship activates fire, thunder. Our worship activates healing. Our worship activates freedom. Our worship activates revival. Our worship. I want to be a, a worshiper in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask my wife to come back to the music and ask Chris if he would come and play, play something. They must know something. They've been practicing. Clinton, why don't you go up and get a mic too? Before we leave here tonight, can we just all stand and could you lift your hands to the Lord? And let's worship him. Is there a worshiper in the house? Is there, is there a David? Is there a Mary in the house? Amen. That we would just call out to God with no reservations tonight. Oh, God, I'm so thankful, God, for all that you have done. Lord Jesus, I may not be perfect, oh, God. Oh, God, but I'm thankful, Lord, for all that you have done. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let the sweet aroma of worship fill this room. Let it rise before the Father like a fragrant, sweet perfume. our sacrifice consume oh let the sweet aroma of worship fill this room let the sweet aroma of worship fill this room let it rise before the father like a fragrant sweet perfume pleasing and our sacrifice consume oh, let the sweet aroma of worship fill this room worship oh, worship the Lord praises to the one
Wow, what a beautiful spirit of worship that's here right now. Can we, I know if you have to go, that's fine, but, you know, I think there's just some times that we just got to take a moment. Don't, don't go any, we're going to sing this again, and, 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 you know, before we bring it to a close tonight, but I don't know what you have gone through, but hear me, that when you begin to worship, Pastor, just talked an incredible message tonight, that when you begin to worship, everything just seems to fade in that moment. And right now, I, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you faced. I don't know what you're facing. We're going to sing this again. But listen to me. We are before the throne. And in your spirit, if you could just humble yourself tonight. Say, hey, God, I'm singing this. It's not just a song that we sing. But tonight, I'm singing this as a prayer to you. Is that all right if we do this just a couple more times? That, there's a beautiful spirit that's here right now. And I'm telling you what, as Pastor said, something happens. Something happens. And so let's sing this, but don't worry about who's around you right now. Don't worry about the one sitting beside you. It's you and him. And so let's sing this, but this is a prayer to him. We could close this out tonight with prayer, but I, I really don't think there's any better way to close out a service than just giving them worship. And I think what we could just do tonight is just say, amen, I agree. <laughs> amen. Have a great week. God bless.